Good evening from Los Angeles. I'm Lawrence O'Donnell, in for Keith Olbermann. Many on the left have complained about the watered-down provisions in the Democrats' health care reform bill, but only one liberal in the House, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, went so far as to vote against it last November. He didn't just vote against it. He denounced it, point by Democratic talking point. It was assumed that Kucinich definitely would be voting against it again, but with the possibility that a single vote could decide the fate of the final legislation. The effort to change the mind of the gentleman from Ohio is in full force tonight. Ahead, my interview with Congressman Kucinich. First, the latest details. President Obama today delivered his most direct and energized pitch in months in support of his proposal to reform the nation's health care system. Outside Philadelphia, the president literally and proverbially rolled up his sleeves to argue that now is the time, finally, to fix the system. Since we took this issue on a year ago, there have been plenty of folks in Washington who've said that the politics is just too hard. They've warned us we may not win. They've argued now is not the time for reform. It's going to hurt your poll numbers. How's it going to affect Democrats in November? Don't do it now. My question to them is, when's the right time? If not now, when? If not us, who? The president warned that without reform, insurance premiums will just keep going up and insurance companies will keep making money even as they lose customers. And even if some people drop out, they'll still make more money by raising premiums on customers that they keep. And they will keep on doing this for as long as they can get away with it. I mean, there's no secret they're telling their investors this. We are in the money. We are going to keep on making big profits, even though a lot of folks are going to be put under hardship. So how much higher do premiums have to rise until we do something about it? How many more Americans have to lose their health insurance? How many more businesses have to drop coverage? To wavering Democrats, the president argued that passing reform was the right thing to do. So I'll be honest with you. I don't know how passing health care will play politically, but I do know that it's the right thing to do. To Republican claims that they want to start over with health care reform, the president asked, in effect, why didn't you do it when you had the chance? I got all my Republican colleagues out there saying, well, no, 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 we want to focus on things like cost. You, you had 10 years. What happened? What were you doing? Senator John Cornyn today promised that Senate Republicans will do everything they can to block health care legislation from coming to a majority vote. He added that Republicans should and will run on repealing health care reform in this year's midterm elections if the bill becomes a law. Meanwhile, Senator Chris Dodd became the 37th Senate Democrat to support passing the public option by reconciliation, something that just might bring Dennis Kucinich closer to supporting the final bill. As promised, we are joined now by Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Democrat of Ohio and a former presidential candidate. Congressman Kucinich, as we've discussed on this show, you're facing a two-vote, a two-stage vote process in the House. First, vote on the Senate bill as is then vote for a reconciliation bill to correct everything that's wrong with the Senate bill that you just voted for. Will you vote yes for the Senate bill? Well, keep in mind, I voted against the first version of the bill in the House. I told the president twice uh, in two different meetings that I couldn't support the bill if it didn't have a robust public option, and if it, uh, at least if they didn't have uh, uh, some, something that was going to protect consumers from these rapid uh, premium increases, and you know what? Uh, the White House counts me as wavering. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I listened to the president in your news story here, and to hear the president, you think that he was for single payer, at least a public option, but he's not. This bill represents a giveaway to the insurance industry, $70 billion a year, and no guarantees of any control over premiums, forcing people to buy private insurance, 
five consecutive years of double-digit premium increases. I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't see that this bill is a solution. The insurance companies are the problem, and we're giving them a version of a bailout. So did we just get a no there, Congressman? Will you vote against the Senate bill at the first stage of this process? If, that's, if that sounded like a no, you're correct. Okay. Will you be comfortable if it turns out you are, in effect, the single vote that defeats health care reform? Every vote counts. And I'm one of 435 members of the House of Representatives. The White House has known my position. It's not a secret. Democratic leaders have known my position. You have to remember that I carried a single pair proposal to three Democratic national conventions, three times to the platform committee, twice as a presidential candidate. You know, we need health care reform. We need Medicare for all. We, we need to join the rest of the industrial world in being able to provide health care for our people as a basic right. But the fact is that one out of every three health care dollars goes for corporate profits, stock options, executive salaries, advertising, marketing, the cost of paperwork. This bill doesn't change that. This bill doesn't change the fact that the insurance companies are going to keep socking it to the consumers. So, uh, you know, if, if the White House is ready to go back and have a robust public option, as Jacob Hacker iterated, uh, with 125 million people being able to negotiate and knock down the insurance premiums, then we have something to talk about. But otherwise, uh, you know, I'm, I, need some, I need to hear more about what they're proposing. And what they propose so far isn't anything different than I voted against. Do you fear for the Democratic Party if there is no health care reform bill passed? Do you think that outcome politically for the Democratic Party will be worse uh, than passing this flawed bill? I think the Democratic Party is in political trouble right now because we have 15 million people un unemployed and we have another 11 or 12 million people underemployed. The economy is stagnant. We've given bailouts to Wall Street. We haven't taken care of Main Street. We've got 12 million people could lose their homes this year and a quarter of the population has a uh, is underwater with their mortgage. I mean, we, the economy is stagnant. That's really the key issue. Is health care a problem? You bet it is. Would it be helpful if everyone in this country had health care? Yes, it would. But not in a giveaway to the insurance industry. If you, you have $70 billion a year, put it into health care. You don't have to give uh, the insurance industry their cut because somehow, you know, they have so much influence in a political process. This bill that's going from the uh, Senate to the House is just another version of Medicare Part D, which was a giveaway to the pharmaceutical companies. What do you say to the president and Democrats who say, let's get this passed and then we can build on it with future legislation? You're building on sand. There's no structure here. You're building on a foundation of privatization of our health care system. That's the problem. The insurance companies are the problem. They're nothing to build on. We build our hopes on the insurance companies, and all we're going to have is more poverty in this country. And, and people, aren't going, to, people aren't going to get the care that they need. Ahead, Remember, that. insurance companies make money not providing health care. That is a fundamental uh, uh, truth about our health care system. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Democrat of Ohio, you